Early lock time for the main slate for today over on FanDuel with the main slate locking at 1.10 p.m. Eastern, but still a meaty 10 games on this slate. So our job for today is break down those games in quick fashion to get you on your way to filling out some good lineups over on FanDuel.com. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down Wednesday's 10 10 a game main slate with lock set for 1 10 p.m. Eastern for today. That, that slate runs through the 4 p.m. games. So the 1 through 4 p.m. games are on the main slate, 10 game slate locking at 1 10 p.m. Eastern. The chillier games for today with the winds or the temperatures under 60 degrees. You got Detroit for the Tigers and Guardians, Oakland for the Cubs and the A's, and then Seattle for the Brewers and Mariners. I think they'll be able to keep the roof open for today, which means it'll be the full chill as opposed to the partial chill when the roof is closed. Uh, 48 degrees there. So uh, Tigers are in from center at 11 miles per hour. I would downgrade batters a bit there. In Kansas City for the Royals and the Rangers, winds are out to center at 19 miles per hour. Upgrade batters there. So winds out in Kansas City for the Royals and Rangers, winds in in Chicago for the White Sox and the Phillies. We'll dive into the pitching preview to get you set for today's main slate in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. MLB DFS every weekday. USC v. Austin Swain for select slates. PGA via myself and Brandon Gadula all in the same place. So go search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating as well the nba playoffs are here and you can get in on the action right now from first pit tip with FanDuel. right now all customers can get you a no can get a no sweat same game parlay every weekend when you bet the nba playoffs that's right just place a three plus leg same game parlay or same game parlay plus on any nba playoff game You'll get a bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no sweat same game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. And Massachusetts Hope is here. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, one 877 hope and wire text hope and Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate, Justin Steele comes in with the highest salary at $11,300. Max Scherzer is 10 2. Mike Clevenger is at $9,900. Martin Perez, 96. Johan Oviedo is 93 at Coors Field. Trevor Rogers, 91. Charlie Borden is 9,000. With Eric Lauer, Alex Cobb, Noah Syndergaard, and Taiwan Walker, the others, at $8,000 or higher. Now, here are the list of names. Probably makes it pretty obvious why Justin Steele was 11-3. And to me, at least, Justin Steele, despite that high salary, worth it and is our top pitching option for today. I love pretty much everything about his situation for today. Steele's facing the A's on the road, which is a good park for pitching and a great matchup. The A's have a 117 ISO against lefties on their current active roster since the start of last year. No power in this offense. And that's a nice change of pace for Steele because last time out, he had to face the Dodgers. It's a very difficult spot, but he held them to two runs across seven innings, eight strikeouts there. And Steele has been doing this for a while now. He basically cut out his sinker 12 starts ago. So a large sample. And in that time, he has a 1.45 ERA. So his actual ERA is 1.45. Great results. The peripherals are not quite that good. 
but they're still fantastic, especially compared to this slate. A 3.38 skill interactive ERA, 28% strikeout rate, which is the best mark on this slate in each guy's most relevant sample. And in that time, Steele has also allowed just a 30% hard hit rate. So Steele would be viable a pitcher on a lot of slates, and this one is weak on pitching, which makes him an even easier call. Aya Steele projected for 7.3 strikeouts here. That is the largest number on the slate by a almost a full strikeout, and I'm happy to treat him like that. So Steele is my top guy for cash games, my top guy for tournaments. He is the best option across the board, despite the high salary for today. Now, if you don't want to spend 11-3 for Steele, I get it. I, I do personally, but I get it. There are two guys in the same game with salaries at 91 and 86, who I think are both viable. Those guys are Trevor Rogers and Alex Cobb. Rogers 91, Cobb 86. He will be our value play. But let's start things off with Rogers here. Rogers is a guy I've always had a soft spot for because he was tremendous back in 2021. And obviously last year, a tough year for him across the board. This year, 4.20 ERA, not going to jump off the page at you, but some good underlying data. The big change for Rodgers is the addition of a sinker, and it's not a good strikeout pitch. His whiff rate on that pitch is just 14%, but that thing is killing worms right now. 168 expected Woba against, according to Baseball Savant, the launch angle is like negative 14 degrees. It's, it's getting ground balls, and it's led to a 33% hard hit rate so far this year for Rodgers. He has other pitches that can get strikeouts too, so he has a 12.5% swing and strike rate despite having that sinker being a high usage, low whiff pitch. 24% strike rate so far for Rodgers in three starts, and those are pretty solid numbers. Now he gets the Giants, who are sneakily a plus matchup for lefties because they have a 26% strikeout rate against lefties on the current active roster. They also have a below average WRC plus. I have Rogers projected for 5.98 strikeouts. That's less than steel and a, less than a couple other guys, but it's not elite. But I think there is enough here to give uh, him a whiff at $9,100. So I prefer Rogers over Cobb. Don't like him as much as steel, but for 91, I think he is a good option there. Cobb is 86. He is our top value for today. I think he brings quite a bit to the table. Obviously, facing the Marlins here, given the uh, tie-in with Rodgers, the R Mar Marlins active roster, a 99 WRC plus against righties with a 136 ISO. They don't draw a lot of walks. Not that walks are a concern for Cobb. Doesn't really issue those, but it never really hurts. Cobb also has a new pitch this year. His is a slider, and that slider has a 44% whiff rate on it, and it's pitch he throws almost exclusively to righties, where he uses the curveball and split finger to lefties. The good thing here is the Marlins batting order probably going to have seven righties at most it would have, or at minimum it would have six. So we can use that slider a lot today. And it's looked very good so far. A 3.14 ERA for Cobb across his three starts, 2.95 skill interactive ERA. He is letting up some hard contact, but uh, just a 19% fly ball rate. So he will make some mistakes, but you hope that the mistakes are, not super impactful due to the low walk rate and stuff like that. And the overall body of work for Cobb is very good. He has faced one weaker opponent so far this year. That was the Royals at home. And in that game, seven innings, two earned runs, six strikeouts. Definitely not a bad day at all. The Marlins, again, pretty righty heavy lineup. So I think that makes him a fine play at 86. Between Rodgers and Cobb, I prefer Rodgers, feel pretty good about him, but Cobb is right there too. To me, they're in the same tier. Steele is in his own tier. I would say Rodgers and Cobb are in their own tier. We'll talk about um, Max Scherzer in things to watch later on. Before we get there, though, got to talk about the stacks. And there is a Coors Field game for today between the Pirates and the Rockies, final game of that series. But I'd have a hard time ranking either of those teams above the Cardinals. And I think they are the top options for today. They're facing Madison Bumgarner, who looks like he might be in for another rough season. In his three starts so far, he has led up five, two, and five earned runs, minimal strikeouts, too many walks, a lot of barrels, multiple barrel balls in each start so far for Bumgarner. And all this is, is a continuation of last year. We've seen Bumgarner throwing fewer forcing fastballs uh, and fewer changeups in his past 11 starts. And he's made a lot of tweaks since the start of last year. Hasn't really hit on anything yet. 15% uh, strikeout rate in that time. 5.19 skill interactive ERA. 
both the hard hit rate and fly ball rate are above uh, are at 42%. So not surprisingly, when you let up that much hard contact and let up that many balls in play, the results have been pretty poor. And that's in like neutral matchups across 15 starts, probably going to even out to be about average. The Cardinals are not neutral. They are disgusting against lefties. 144 WRC plus 224 ISO. It is a horror show to be a lefty who is struggling facing this team. So yeah, Coors is appealing. Definitely do like Coors. I think the Cardinals are more appealing and they are my top team for tonight with a rubber stamp runaway margin. I think they are definitively need to be there. And I also think it's important to note that the Cardinals are easy to stack even with Justin Steele because they've got some key value plays. One of those is Wilson Contreras uh, gets a big boost against lefties. If you look at the past calendar year or since the start of last year, Contreras has a 180 ISO against righties with a 32% fly ball rate. Against lefties, his ISO goes up 100 points and his fly ball rate goes up 39 points. His salary is pretty low at $2,400. He's in the ball very well this year. He double dong last night. Um, that was a positive for sure. So Contreras, very fun. Dylan Carlson gets a boost up against lefties. Tommy Edmond does uh, from a power perspective. So all those guys do get a boost here versus the Southpaw. All those guys are value plays. And even Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt don't have super restricted salaries. So the Cardinals, to me, the definite top stack on the main slate. I do think we can put the Pirates second on the list at Coors Field. They're facing Austin Gomber, who is back in the rotation after getting demoted to the bullpen last year. Hasn't quite clicked yet getting back to his form from 2020 or 2021, whichever year Gomber had a really good stretch. Across three starts, Gomber has a 5.32 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is 17% with a 49% fly ball rate. He is doing a decent job of suppressing hard contact, but everything else here is, is pretty gross. Gomber has made one start at Coors Field. It was against a pretty poor Nationals offense, and he let up five earned runs in four and two-thirds innings. So the Pirates, better than expectations, but not great. But seeing the Nationals do that against him, I think can give us a lot of hope and be high them here. So I like the Pirates quite a bit and think uh, we should feel good about them as the number two stack behind the Cardinals. And similar here, We've got some value plays. Rodolfo Castro, uh, his salary comes in, I believe, at $2,700. And yeah, $2,700. And he's a guy who gets a boost up against lefties. 104 plate appearances for Castro versus lefties since the start of last year. A 326 ISO, which is sick. Uh, not elite in the batted ball department. And it is a small sample. So that ISO could come down. But Castro does put the ball in the air. He has a 41% hard hit rate overall this year. He's probably going to hit sixth because it's a lefty. So I think there's enough here to feel good about him for today. So Castro, one of the value plays, uh, Connor Joe's salary is 34. That's not terrible for righty. Key Brian Hayes is uh, $2,900. So you can stack the Cardinals and the Pirates with Justin Steele. And that's the way I want to play things for today personally on this main slate. Now, the final stack for today is the Mariners. They've disappointed so far this year. They've fallen pretty far in my power ranking since opening day. But I think they could get back on track today. They're facing Eric Lauer, and I like stacking against Lauer right now, mostly because of the hard contact he allows. Lauer's velocity is down quite a bit from last year, about two miles per hour his last time out, which was actually better than his first two starts this year. And we're seeing the impact of that in the batted balls because. In his three starts, Lowers let up a 50% hard hit rate with a 46% fly ball rate. That's led to a 5.28 ERA, but his expected ERA is 7.47. Now, Lowers has had some tough matchups. He did face the Cardinals. We mentioned how difficult they are on lefties, but the Mariners are tough too. 114 WRC plus against lefties, a 189 ISO. The weather is not fun, just 48 degrees again for today. And if they close the roof, it only improve that a little bit because it is still open door or uh, open air. But I think the matchup at least makes them in the stacking consideration here. So the Mariners are number three for me. And again, value plays. So steel salary is not that bad. You've got four righties in this lineup who can match lefties. A Eugenio Suarez, $3,000. I mean, this is just among value plays omitting Julio Rodriguez. Uh, a Eugenio Suarez, Cal Rowley's 29, Teoscar Hernandez, 29, AJ Pollock, 27. 
you could build a stack with just those four guys and feel good about the upside within that stack. So I do want Rodriguez because I want the steals and I want his general power, but those guys all totally fine. So I think you can get to steal while getting to, if you want to get to Brian Reynolds, if you want to get to Arenado Goldschmidt, you can make that work. Rodriguez, you can make it work based on the salaries of other guys within these top stacks for today. Things to watch for the main slate. Do you want to talk Max Scherzer briefly? He's viable a pitcher, but dealing with this back and oblique injury, which is not ideal, letting up a ton of fly balls and hard contact. He's facing the Dodgers on the road. So if you were to go full contrarian, this would be a good spot because people probably won't be on Scherzer, who is a good pitcher over the long run, but he's not my top three for a reason. Um, there are a lot of concerns here with, with Scherzer, and I'm okay kind of waiting things out. Hopefully he shows life today, but doesn't go nuts. We can buy back in on him his next time out. Other side of Coors Field, but besides the Pirates, is the Rockies against Johan Oviedo. And I kind of think he's good. I don't know if that's bold to say, but uh, Oviedo is throwing more curveballs so far this year, and his velocity is very high. He has a 3.59 skill interactive ERA with a 24% strikeout rate. He's facing a Rockies team that's pretty poor without the park factor boost. So you can always justify stacking a team at Coors Field. So the Rockies are not totally out of play, but I think Oviedo is pretty good, and that's enough where I'm okay being lower on the Rockies than usual. I tried stacking against Mike Clevenger last week with the Orioles. They eventually scored six runs, but I don't believe any of those came against Clevenger. So it didn't work. Uh, I'm open to it again, though. The peripherals are still pretty poor. He gets the Phillies here today. Uh, wind is in, which is kind of stinks, not an elite offense. So not a top priority, but if you want to stack a team that not many people will be on, I would say, uh, the Phillies could be a good route for that. Their implied total today, 4.32. So probably not a ton of interest for most people, but I think they're at least a consideration given Clevenger's peripherals are pretty rough so far this year. Let's wrap things up here with the dinger calls for today. The boring one, Teoscar Hernandez. Disgusting numbers against lefties, gets a face of lefty, lets up a lot of fly balls and a lot of hard contact. So it's really hard to say no there. So Teoscar Hernandez be the boring one. The fun one, tentatively, Wilson Contreras. Not sure if they'll DH him today. It's a day game after a night game. He is a catcher. So it's possible he gets a day off, but I will go with him for right now. If we don't get him, Maybe it's a Dylan Carlson call as being the alternative. Uh, should be pretty high in the order. Hasn't done a ton so far this year, but in the long run does have some power against lefties. So I guess I would go with Carlson if we can't get Contreras, but hopefully Contreras DHs. We can get him in there for today and feel good about that. So as of right now, home run calls are Teoscar Hernandez and Wilson Contreras, but can pivot to... Um, yeah, let's pivot to uh, Dylan Carlson if Contreras doesn't wind up playing. That is all the time that we have here for today on the Solo Shot. Once again, lock is at 1.10 p.m. Eastern, so go get those lineups set. Fill them out. Get them ready to win some money for today, and good luck to all of you in doing so. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. If you have questions for me, I am on Twitter, at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.